Africa. Welcome to a special edition of Issues and Answers here at the NTN Studios featuring outstanding students of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. My name is Natalie Julie Fannis and I thank you for joining us here this today. It's a pleasure always for us to be able during the Nobel Laureate Festival to feature our outstanding students at the college who are able to balance so much and who are able to achieve so much. This year, the theme for the Nobel Laureate Festival is Celebrating Excellence Vision 2020. So our main topic will be to hear the students' vision for St. Lucia and for youth in particular. With me today are two students, Daniel De Freitas from the Division of Art, Science and General Studies and Zanaka Emilier from the Division of Agriculture. And we want to welcome both of them and thank them for being with us. Welcome. Thank, thank you. you very much. So you are exemplary students in leadership positions who do so much, particularly where youth is concerned. I want to give you an opportunity first to tell the nation about yourself. Let's start with Daniel. Okay. Um, good day. Um, as you have already stated, my name is Daniel Taj de Freitas. I am a second year student of um, South Sa Lewis Community College. I will be sitting keep for the second time uh, this year. I study biology, chemistry, physics, and Caribbean studies. Um, it sounds weird that I do so many sciences, um, especially when people find out that I was the um, creator of the Nobel Laureate production um, this year. Um, I'm still happy on how well that it turned out. I'm also the vice president of the Drama Club, vice president of the Dog Students Council. I'm also on the executive of Spanish Club, but <laughs> and of course many other other clubs. But um, I also one thing I hold dear to my heart is being the general secretary of the Grizzly South Youth and Sports Council. <laughs> that sounds like a full plate, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> and I know Zanika is no different. Let's hear from you, Zanika. Okay, um, Zanika Emilia. Currently acquiring a, an associate's degree in general agriculture at the South Lewis Community College Year 2. I'm currently the president of the National Students Council, um, newly elected country representative for the Youth Climate Change Activist Regional Group. I also serve on my divisional council at the Division of Agriculture. Many clubs as Daniel, <laughs> including the Spanish club, which we love daily. And also, I do work in my community on the Babonu Youth and Sports Council. I like so much that you sound like community people. And not only do you serve on your at your school clubs, but you're also part of your community. So tell us a little bit about how you balance all of that with your challenge of completing your studies at the South Arthur Com Lewis Community College, which I know is not just a, a walk <laughs> in the park. Yes, Daniel. Well, as I said, it's definitely not a walk in, in the park. But I think um, the more time that you spend doing it, the easier that it, it, it becomes. Doing, doing it meaning what? <laughs> balancing. Oh, okay. All, to balance. Yes, all of these extracurricular activities. I would say um, to one who is looking to do the same, firstly, is just um, time management. Time management is the be all of one schedule. If you have one and you should have have one so you know, having a schedule helps you map out what you're going to do for the day the week the month and it helps you visualize what you'll spend your time doing so that not only do you have um you're able to make time for the things all of the commitments that you have put on your plate but it also allows you to work more efficiently with the time that you have Okay, Seneca, how do, how do you manage? Well, for me, it's all about prioritizing your time and committing yourself to specific stuff as it relates to school and what we have going on. A lot of what we do outside of school is actually related to school. So you find 
knowledge filtering from us being in these groups also helps us at school. But at the same time, you need to sort of balance the two where you go to school. I mean, we miss a lot of school being mm -hmm. a part of all these things. But at the end of the day, it's all about having a proper schedule, a proper planner as to what you're mm -hmm. going to do and actually designating time to specific things that matter. So putting the ones that need a lot more work first and then come to the rest later. Mm -hmm. So that's how I go about actually trying to stay in school and balancing out the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Give us a little background into what propelled you into those fields that you're in now, particularly with the community service. What, what pushed you in that particular direction? Mm -hmm. Well, in terms of the com community service, as, as you said, um, what propelled me was actually someone else that I work with frequently. She's also um, a very um, heavily involved person in youth development. Her name is Desiree Daisy. Um, it was two years ago, I believe, when she um, asked me, knowing the, the qualities that I have be with before, um, while she worked with me and also just being a close friend, she realized that um, the qualities and passions that I possessed would have allowed me to thrive in, 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 in youth development. So it was more of a, 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 a recruitment. Mm. But um, it's just that I think a lot of young people, um, including myself, has the passion and the interest to give back to their society because most people think, well, some people may think, that the only opportunity that they'll get to give back to society is maybe when they're already working, maybe when they're an adult. But the truth is that we can already give back and be a part of change from this early age and from this level. Thank you, Danny. What about you, Zanaka? Well, I live in Babono, and although I'm not one to always be on the streets, as you may call it, I do a lot of observations in Babono and I have realized that a lot of young people spend their time doing nothing and for me any way that I could be a part of something where we could get to these young people to have them to be involved include them in stuff that would keep them out of the, on the blocks and actually have their mind being stimulated in something that is positive that would impact our society I believe that's where it started for me and then being able to see that also we have students impacted in that same breath um, it really pushed me to get involved in the student movement and like daniel i have many friends who encourage me to continue continue to be a leader in that capacity so that all students are looked after and all young people actually have a voice on their behalf and their concerns can be heard just a follow-up, so you told me about your interest in community development. Why did you choose agriculture as your field of study? Well, growing up, I really loved my environment, everything, and my dad specifically used to spend a lot of time with us, well, me, um, in the yard doing different stuff. And for me, it was something where I didn't want to go into business and science because it wasn't too exciting. I wanted to be more out there with nature, mother nature, as you would say it. I wanted to really get involved in planting stuff. And I was so fascinated to see that stuff could actually grow from me planting it. So it really stemmed from there. And a lot of people usually, when they see the brown shirt and not the green pants, they would say that I go to dogs. But in truth and in fact, I go to Dagri and I really love that I chose that. Excellent. Daniel, what about your interest in science? Well, my interest in science started from a very young age. Um, I've always been the one to yearn for, for more knowledge, as I have from a very young age. I believe that knowledge is power. So I was always um, interested in knowing how things work, whether it be um, what, uh, what, what's in our food, how we get to, 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 to work. Um, what we put on our bodies. I just think that um, everything stems from somewhere. And science, if you look at the science that I do, it's um, the three pure sciences, as people may call them, biology, physics, and chemistry. So it allows me to get in information on essentially how the world works from every standpoint. Um, my main focus is biology. 
um, because that is what I aspire to, what field I aspire to go in, in, into later. So my fascination when it, comes to, when it came to the environment, more specifically animals, was really what pushed me to continue um, working in the scientific fields. Very good. You sound like you have uh, that career path very well mapped out. And that, for me, is something that young people can have difficulty with, but I'm glad that you're thinking of it from such an early age. So we have to take a quick break now. I ask that you remain with us. We've heard about the young people when we come back, their views on issues of concern to young people. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, Wasco. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. Thank you for staying with us. And if you're just joining us, welcome. We are here speaking with students of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College as part of the, so the college's activities for the Nobel Laureate Festival. And with us are Daniel De Freitas and Zanaka Emilier, both very active students on the campus and in their communities. And we just heard all about their lives and what they would want to do in the future. And now we want to move on a little bit to their passions. So, Daniel recently was the writer, co-writer, and director-producer of one of our um, activities, which is a theatrical production that is student-led. And this year, the title was God of Earth. Daniel, tell us about your passion for the arts. Okay. Um, the, despite being a, a science student and marveling at all of the scientific-based research and concepts that I've stumbled upon in my 18 years of life, I do have a side of me which is so creative and abstract that I just absolutely need to have an outlet for it. And that is exactly where um, the arts come in. Um, in the past, when it came to SMC, I have been a performer, I have written for Literary Night, Talfest. So having the ab ability to sing is where it all really started for, for, for me. People would always tell me that, oh, you have a nice voice. So um, I practiced and right now I, I do sing gen generally. Unfortunately, I didn't get the opportunity to sing for the production yeah, that I just <laughs> came up. That, But um, everyone did get to see my writing skills, per, per producing skills. So um, that in itself is another facet of, of my creative being is, is is, is, is what I should say. So um, the arts is really just an, an, an outlet for anyone's um, emotions, imaginations, um, anything that you would like to put out here in a media, in a medium that people would find fascinating and of course entertaining, because at heart I do feel like I am an, an entertainer. Mm -hmm. um, that is where the arts plays a significant role in my life. Let's just speak a little bit more about God of Earth mm -hmm. um, and what inspired it because it was so well received <laughs> and the adults in the audience, um, people like Kendall Hippolyte, mm -hmm. Donald Dixon, Jane King Hippolyte was so impressed with the concept and with even how you all executed. Tell us a little bit about what inspired God of Earth. So God of Earth is inspired by a multitude of things as you could, um, well if you've seen by the play. Um, you could see the incorporation of my science-based background in terms of the planets, um, space in, in general, all of the tidbits and little fine points in the theatrical production did cater to the scientific sci side of me. So that was the, sci the scientific-based um, inspiration of it. But God of Earth, as the name suggests, is also heavily influenced by religion and um, Religion in the sense of how, what role religion plays in human so societies, how did it come about, the different um, variations of, of, of religion, mm -hmm. and how religion is, uh, is a venue of cultural expression. So um, my love for cultural diversity, um, which is prominent in the Caribbean, 
um, as well as religion on a whole, whether it be from the Western or Eastern Hemisphere, all co culminated to one, together with my scientific background, to give you the <laughs> really um, um, mishmashed almost kind of concept, which is God of Earth. Give us a little bit of synopsis for somebody who hadn't seen it. Just tell them a little bit about what the play was about. So God of Earth is, um, the premise of it is that the nine, the eight planets, sorry, in our solar system is are all named after gods except Earth. Um, Earth originally was named after a god whose name is Gaia, and that character does appear in the production, but um, it's still the official name of the planet is Earth, which is just dirt. So um, I thought of what would be the um, if Earth were to be named after a, a Roman god, or if there was a Roman god entitled Earth, what would be that story of that god and how would it intertwine in the bigger picture of Roman mythology? Very, very interesting. And I know there are calls for you to do a, a second <laughs> showing. I hope you all could work on that so that more people can be exposed. I hope as well. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for that. Zanaka, climate change. I know one of the reasons you've missed school is because you attend conferences on, on climate change. Tell us about your involvement and your passion for that. Okay, so I started in secondary school at Leon Hess. Um, I was really motivated by one of my past teachers who recently passed away, Mr. Gabriel. And he really encouraged me to speak on issues as it relates to climate change because he was my bio teacher and during class, I would challenge him with a lot of questions as it relates to what's going on with our planet right now and a lot of the issues that we're facing. And due to that, I went to a summit in Jamaica. And this summit really pushed me to really speak on issues more. And I've been doing a lot of research because we are part of a small island developing state and I've worked with many key stakeholders, such as the Caribbean Regional Agriculture, Caribbean Agricultural Regional Research and Development Institute, CADI, and one of the main projects was to really go out to our farmers and really see what the effects of climate change has been doing to their farms. And I must say that we are really in a bit of some problems mm -hmm. here in St. Lucia, and that in itself has really made me question myself as a young person as to why don't we have many more young people speaking on climate change issues. I recently went to the United Nations Summit in September last year, where that was the first youth climate change summit actually hosted by the General Secretary of the UN. And we really had a good time hearing different experiences different solutions as it relates to getting from where we are to a better place for future generations to come. And that in itself, I really think that with my new position as a country rep for the YCCA, that I need to mobilize more young people to really speak on issues and really get involved and know what is actually going on because it's not going to only affect the agriculture aspect of the island or the earth in itself, but that will filter down into all of our industries. And I think that's something that we need to understand. Okay, so um, we just have a little time left before the break, but what kind of activities have you planned um, for youth to before sensitize Before I went to the summit, I actually hosted a forum, a lecture with the Division of Agriculture where mm -hmm. I brought in someone to speak on the effects of climate change as it relates to food security because we know that we have a high food um, import bill in St. Lucia. So I really wanted them to have a feel on what it really is and what does it mean that we will not be able to provide food for our country anymore soon if we don't start to look at alternative ways of farming in St. Lucia. So I've hosted that and I've been speaking to many other climate change activists and we're working on some other activities to involve young people. 
Fascinating. I'm so proud of, of those students and the work that they're doing. We are due for yet another break. Please stay tuned. There's a lot more to come from Daniel and Yannicka. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rise St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. We are speaking with Daniel and Zanaka, two students from the South Louis Community College, and it really has been an uplifting conversation with them. They are really inspirations to young people, and we want to continue now. They have spoken about themselves and their passion. I want them now to speak to some issues that affect young people. And I think given that you are at the highest level of, of education that we have in St. Lucia, our premier tertiary institution, I want you to talk about education and your vision for education education in St. Lucia and for young people. Who wants to start? I, I'm throwing it up this time. <laughs> I'll start. Um, so if I may, uh, for education, definitely one of the first um, visions that I have for St. Lucia's education system is the implementation, or should I say the transition of Sir Arthur Lewis um, College to become a full-fledged university. I mean, um, that would be so much easier and so much easier for one, for um, people who want to remain in St. Lucia, people to attain a proper degree in whatever field that the, the, the university will provide. Um, it will cut costs on uh, us students having to leave to gain um, um, diplomas and, and certificates such as our masters or, 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 or bachelors so um, that I think is one of the one of the um, visions that should be at the forefront of being brought into fruition um, in addition to that I would also like to see that the variety of of um, courses provided at this um, tertiary institution I would hope to be expanded in the past um, sorry, has to be expanded in, in the future. In the past, I know that there has been um, courses which used to be um, delivered to, to students but aren't anymore, so I would like to see a, revitaliz a, re a, re a revitalization of, of these courses to be brought back, as well as the introduction of theater arts for, for, for keep, mm -hmm. <laughs> for, for, uh, for example. Um, I just think that there is so much potential in terms of um, the um, variety of skills and interests that young people have that they want to take seriously and turn into a profession um, that is sadly being missed out upon um, here in, in, in St. Lucia. Okay, thank you. Zanaka? I totally agree with Daniel. And another thing is that I would like to see that we have a more inclusive syllabus in St. Lucia. Um, mainly at the secondary schools mm -hmm. because a lot of the time we see that our syllabus sort of caters to the more academic students and a lot of the time our more vocational and athletic students are sort of left out but the transition is happening with we've seen they um, turn the Grizzly secondary school into mm -hmm. a sports facility and I just wish that they would really sort of start to do more in terms of the arts and even agriculture in itself. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would like to see with the education system and being a part of the NSC, we've began to work closely with ministers. Even we had a meeting with the prime minister where we discussed um, 
how we could make the education system a more conducive and effective one in St. Lucia for our students. So we've been working along with them and I could say that if we continue to discuss these issues and how we could improve education, that sooner or later our education system will be one that would cater to all students and we would be suffering from brain drain, mm -hmm. sorry, so that everyone could feel like they have a place here to study in St. Lucia. Okay, thank you. Um, we are getting very close to our independence celebrations. Um, last year, there was a lot of festivity around our 40th. Um, I think we can say we're adult now uh, at the age of 40. Um, and I know you've been around just for, for 18 years, but for a country that has been, that is celebrating 40 years of independence, what for you would you like to see? Um, stand out as representing St. Lucia, as being at the forefront of our development mm -hmm. um, as an independent nation? Okay. Well, um, when one speaks of independence, I think definitely what comes to mind is self-efficiency and sufficiency. And as um, Zanika has stated before, um, one of the main importance for us is providing food for the nation. It is sad to see that our import bill for foods as well as other items is so high. So um, well one thing that I think that needs to be put at the forefront of development for St. Lucia in order to exemplify our independence is to lessen our dependency on other countries in terms of imports. So. Um, there's just so much potential. I'll use an example such as um, en energy generation. I think there has been a discussion for the generation of geothermal energy um, using our um, vol vol volcano for some time now, um, taking advantage of the Caribbean climate where there is so much sun and so much wind um, to generate solar or wind-powered energy. Um, so in all, I think that there's a lot of talk happening in terms of allow, um, trying to push St. Lucia forward to um, investing into those sort of um, plans. But I think that what a lot of us would like to see, especially young people who are hearing so much about climate change and seeing um, so, so much that um, the world may not be in a position where we could en enjoy. Um, we would just like to see these initiatives brought to, brought to the forefront as these are ways to help preserve the earth and these are ways which will ensure our future um, to be successful and long lasting. Sanika, has he has he stolen your fire? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> he sounds like he's encouraged on your area. Is yes, there anything yes. else, given that you're with the NSC, is there anything else as an independent nation that you'd like to see for St. Lucia? Just about a minute Definitely left. agreeing with Daniel. I also think along with that, as an independent island, we need to sort of try to lessen on the unemployment of young people in the country. Definitely. Recently, um, young people across the Caribbean. Actually, last week we had a summit in Trinidad where we discussed economic growth and decent work for young people. Not only having just an informal job where you probably go twice a week, but something that could enable you to get something for yourself daily. And I think that as an island, we need to not only look at trying to create jobs, but how as a young person in yourself, can you start up something? How could you do something that could actually help other young people? And I think that we need to sort of resort to having these discussions as an island and as young people also. Entrepreneurship. Yes, definitely. Yes, I think that is so important. I think these are two critical areas for young people. Mm -hmm. Sustainability, having a future, and being able to provide employment and be self-employed. We are celebrating excellence, and therefore we celebrate you. This has been an excellent discourse. I thank you so much for all the work that you put in, for being shining examples for the young people. And I thank you for sharing your vision with us. And I want to encourage you to continue what you're doing, and I know it'll be nothing but success for you. 
So thank you so much, Danielle de Freitas and Zanaka Emilia, students of the South Louis Community College, for being with us today on Issues and Answers. And thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, I hope that you were inspired and that you have hope for the future. We end here with the Nobel Laureate Festival being celebrated by the South Louis Community College under the theme, Celebrating Excellence, Vision 2020. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank <laughs> you.